What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Herkaway here. And I know I've been away for a while, got a lot of things going on in my life, but I'm back. And this video is all about how to pass that CCNA exam. So, let's hop into the video. Now turn up. All right, so I know, again, I've been away for a while. I'm a father now, so I, I can't believe that I'm a father, but I am. <laughs> um, with that being said, while I was gone, I have been studying for my CCNA because I do want to advance my career, and all you guys going into IT, I recommend that you do the same. Um, so as you already know, I have my A+, plus, Net+, plus, and Security+, plus certifications, which CompTIA um, recently came up with stackable certification. So if you have more than one cert with CompTIA, then you have this new title. So technically right now, I am a secure infrastructure specialist uh, because I have all three certifications. And now recently from Cisco, I am a Cisco certified network associate. Um, and that's in the routing and switching. Uh, in the future, I do plan on uh, going for the CCNA security and even going for my CCMP, you know, she's a network professional. Uh, but right now, I do want to take a rest because that CCNA is, it can be a little bit challenging. It is a prestigious certifications to have. It's industry known. It's worldwide. Everyone knows it. If you have that CCNA, that means that you put in some work to do some things. So with that being said, my first, my first recommendation when thinking about taking the CCNA exam is to make sure this is something that you want to do. Um, now, there are other equipment other than Cisco. However, everyone knows that Cisco makes the best equipment. Now, this is not a sponsored video, obviously, but I think it goes without saying that Cisco does make the best equipment. They make long-lasting equipments. And it's just, again, it's known all over the world. All right, if you are trying to compare something like a Juniper router versus a Cisco router, I mean, Cisco most likely is going to win out overall. And the best thing about Cisco is, yes, they do have their proprietary stuff, but they do work nicely with non-Cisco devices. Uh, there are some protocols that just works, uh, like the point-to-point -point protocol. It's a lot of stuff that goes into it so Cisco can play nice with non-Cisco devices. All right, as far as the exam itself, it is a two-part exam, or you can take the composite exam. Me personally, I believe in taking the exam in two parts. Hear me out. So if you take the composite exam, yes, you only have to take one exam. Uh, it is cheaper by $5. And also, I mean, you don't have to worry about um, asking a lot of questions on one specific area. All right, so yeah, it, it sounds good, right? Well, let's think about it. You, you're taking this exam, you you study a lot. I mean, there's a lot when it comes into to the CCNA writing and switching. There's a lot, there's, um, all, obviously there's the commands you have to know. There's the redundancy commands, there's the uh, Spanish tree protocol. Uh, what, what else we have? Rapid Spanish tree, uh, Spanish tree protocol. There is the different routing protocols, you know, RIP, uh, BGP, uh, ERGRP, or OSPF. There's a lot of there's a lot of that in there. Then you have to know about IPv6 and how to use IPv6 and the differences be between IPv6 and IPv4. Not just in the in the addresses themselves, but the commands as well. And you got to know just what the different functions of a switch and a router can do. You know, once once you leave that switching element there, routing pretty much takes the majority of the whole CCNA, I guess you could say, ecosystem. All right. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot to take in. So by breaking it down into two parts, I think that would be your better choice. And not to mention, if you do... Uh, taken in two parts and you do pass the first exam you still get a certification now is it as good as the ccna no but it's called the ccent the cisco certified entry network technician basically means that you have a basic understanding on how routers and switches work which is still better than nothing in my book 
All right, now again, it is a little bit more expensive than a composite exam, which is $5, but you get to break it down. You get to focus more on certain areas. And at the end of the day, you still get a certification. And then when you take that uh, second part of these uh, CCNA exam, you get your CCNA certificate. So, I mean, to me, taking a two-part exam is a win-win, all right? You don't have to focus on so much. You don't have to try to know everything, all right? Just those writing protocols alone can be difficult. I mean, you got to know the, the different metrics and the different costs and just knowing what goes into a BGP and ERGRP and OSPF, it's it's a lot, all right? It's, it's not easy. And, and it's just a CCNA. Just imagine if you was trying to go for your CCNP. It's, it's up there. It's up there. So that's just my recommendation. Taking in two parts uh, because at the end of the day, when you pass both exams, you still get rewarded at the end of the day. Unlike CompTIA, a plus two-part exam, once you pass the first part, you, you don't get nothing. You just get congratulations now go past the second one right so it, it, it doesn't really mean anything but with cisco it means something you can say hey at least i know how to work some commands inside of a, a cisco router and switch and switch i may not know the writing protocols but i do know how to get myself around the uh the command line interface so yeah that's that all right another recommendation i have is actually using uh simulations or package packet tracer. Now, if you watch videos or you read books, they recommend build your own labs, get the actual equipment. And you can find them on eBay, you know, 30 bucks here, 80 bucks there, 300 bucks there, depending on what router it is, depending on what model it is, depending on what iOS uh, version there is. And I iOS is for the actual Cisco operating system, not for Apple. <laughs> so I just, I wanna point that out there. Uh, so it just depends on what, what uh, model it is, but you can find it out there. However, if you're like me and you don't really want to spend money on equipment that is just there, or you don't have the space, or you may be in a country where it's not legal to have um, devices that can pretty much generate cri cryptography. Uh, to, there is a one label in Cisco devices that says this device does use cryptography and in some countries that is illegal. So with that being said, maybe you can't just get around with that. Instead of, instead of just relying on what others say, download GNS3, you know, Google some iOS um, flash files that you can just download off the internet. And I'm not going to put them down below because it's a simple Google, you know, probably the first or second result that you get back from Google will let you know that, hey, these are the iOS files that I need. So you can just use those, dump them into a GNS3, and then you can use the full commands. Now, the only command that doesn't work in GNS3 that I've seen so far is the ether channel command. However, with that being said, Cisco has its own packet tracer that does use uh, ether channel. So you can practice your ether channel commands and kind of get an understanding on how it works and packet tracer now packet tracer doesn't have everything so don't rely just on that uh, for example packet tracer doesn't use ipv6 which is very interesting especially since it's on the exam but it doesn't use ipv6 uh, and i believe it doesn't even use bgp i could be wrong on that but i know for sure it doesn't use ipv6 which is why gns3 does work all right so just a recommendation if you do get gns3 Go ahead and download VMware as well and install Linux and uh, as a, a virtual machine instead of trying to use GNS3 on Windows. It's It works, but it's a little complicated. And if you install it on Linux, it just makes life easier. And you can just run it in uh, VMware, which is also free. So everything is free. You haven't paid a dime yet for studying. All right. So with that being said, hey guys, uh, Shabor Herkaway here. I just had to interject into this video. I apologize for interrupting, but uh, I noticed that I did not mention how long it took me to study. Uh, so I just want to let you guys know, cause I know I'm going to get asked that in the comments. Uh, so I started studying way back in January. Well, not way back. It was literally three months ago. I started studying in January, uh, around January 1st. Um, as I was studying, I, I had my son. So I had to kind of put a pause on it and kind of extend my studying. But 
kept studying, kept studying, kept studying. And then in February, February 12th, I took my ICND-1, passed it that same day. I mean, as soon as I got back from the testing center, I started on ICND-2. Did that for a month on March 12th, took the ICND-2, passed that as well. So I just want to get that out there um, because I know I'm going to get asked that. Uh, if you want more information, uh, leave a comment below and I'll be more than happy to answer you guys. All right, let's get back into this video. Moving along, what study material should you use? Now, when I posted that I passed the uh, CCNA on Reddit, a lot of people messaged me saying, I'm surprised you didn't use a book. And the way that I see it, at least this is the type of learner that I am, I'm not a book learner. I'm not a book reader, honestly. I don't like reading books. I can't get into the book. Now, am I illiterate? No, I can definitely read, obviously. But I'm just books. I, I get bored. I get sleepy. And I close it and I'm falling asleep. You know, that's what I'm... That's why I'm glad I'm done with school and I don't have to worry about textbooks anymore. Uh, but, you know, if you're that person who does need a book, you know, and you really also don't want to just spend no money, then go to your local library. Um, there's lots and lots of books that works with uh, CCNA. I believe Mike Myers is a popular one. Uh, I, don't, I mean, I don't know the books off the top of my head, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure if you go to your local library, you will see some CCNA books. And also with those books, there are practice exams in the back. So that way, again, you can get that studying. But the reason that I don't like books is because I need to actually see it. All right. This is something that is like something you have to see to, to get to me. You know, when it comes to the A plus exam, reading book, yeah, you can get away with that. But for learning these commands and actually seeing it done and actually seeing someone, you know, uh, move a cable from one port to another port, I have to actually see that. And that's why I relied on videos. So the two people that I really enjoy is Jeremy uh, from CBT Nuggets. Uh, I can link his uh, profile down below in the description. So please go check him out. And also uh, Chris Bryant from Udemy. All right, I believe he has the number one um, course on U Udemy. So again, those are two people that I relied on heavily when it came to studying for my CCNA. All right, so for actual practice testing, uh, I can't say that I did use Bozing testing environment. Now, I do want to say it is a pretty penny. It is. This was like $85, and that was worth a discount. Um the testing environment is truly, it puts you into that seat when you actually go into the exam center, all right? There's multiple choice questions. There are simulation questions. There's uh, questions that probably is not even in your study material, but it's good to know, all right? I remember when I was studying for my ICND-1, they was asking questions about auto summarization, which is not until you get to ICND-2, all right, so it's just it's just stuff that's really good. As far as the simulation goes, they're awesome. They're great. Uh, just like the way that the Cisco exam prepares it, uh, you you get this uh, you get this topology that you can click on different routers, and when you click on a router, it brings up the command line interface, and you can pretty much simulate like you were on that actual router uh, connect from a console support. It's really awesome, and it really did help me. Get it, and not only does it help you put yourself into that uh, Cisco testing environment, it explains why that answer is correct, and I think that's the most important thing. Yes, you can know which answer is correct, but why is that answer correct? Why um, can you do four thousand nine four thousand ninety five groups in HRRP version two and not version one? Why uh, do you only have three uh, states in a rapid span of tree protocol? It's just things like this. It just makes it a lot easier to kind of wrap your head around it. Uh, another study, uh, another practice test that I did use was something called skill point. Uh, now, a lot of you may not have access to this. So you, you may have it. I, I'm not sure. It depends on your employer. However, because I am a veteran, I was able to keep my credentials to log into Skillport from when I was in the Army. Uh, so it, it is helpful uh, and it also help, helped me a lot as well. It didn't have a lot of simulations that I like, but the questions were good and it did explain it. 
And lastly, the last study material that I used was called Test Out. All right. Now, Test Out was something that my school uses for when I'm taking a certain course. So they sent me an email. It's like, hey, you can uh, sign up for our service, which is usually $79 a month. But try it out for $5. See what you think. And for five bucks, I was like, yeah, why not? All right, so for $5, it allowed me to kind of prepare and kind of get a different a different point of view on how this material should be used. And that's another thing I want to say. When it comes to choosing your study material, just don't rely on one thing. Go If you can, go to different sources, all right? With CBT Nuggets, yeah, it's a pretty penny, but they do offer a free trial, so you can kind of get that uh, while you're using the free trial. For Udemy, it was $12 for listening to Chris Bryant. He gave you ICD1, ICD2, and he's also throwing in CC Security for free. So, you know, that's a three for one deal. You can't beat that for 12 bucks, all right? And then you could take it to you, you could take it with you wherever you are. You don't need an internet connection. You just download it. Again, this is not a sponsored video. I just want to give you all the things you can to pass this exam because. The exam is not cheap, but it's the most one of the most recognized certifications to have in IT networking. All right, so again, I hope this video will help you out. Uh, if it's something I can add, please drop it down in the comments below. If you're going to take your test, please leave a comment. You know, I reply to all my comments, and I want to help you guys out if I can, any way, shape, form, or fashion. All right, so that's all I got. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. But subscribe to the channel. Since I'm back, I got more content coming for you guys. And uh, that's all I got to say for now. It's your boy, Herkaway. I'm out of here. Peace.